Hello everyone, I am Nathan P. Butler, and this is my Star Wars vlog, The Voice of Reason, or Lack Thereof. This is the first episode, if you didn't watch the brief introduction or number zero episode, the introduction there was just to introduce me for those who don't know anything about me, so that hopefully there is a sense of my bona fides, so you can think that, okay, this guy might actually know what he's talking about when it comes to Star Wars topics. If you feel interested in checking it out, it is available. The short version of why this vlog is started is simply because over the years, I've sort of been opining on Star Wars topics, editorializing on Star Wars topics in various forms, whether it's through social media these days or in podcasts these days like Star Wars Beyond the Films, the Star Wars Sports Rebels Roundtable, Cloud City Casino, uh, or in the past, going all the way back to my rather scathing original podcast series, Chrono Radio, back in 2002. Uh, I tend to like talking about Star Wars and sort of waxing intellectual and getting deeper into Star Wars topics and being intellectually honest about it, trying to give us a chance to pull away all the clutter, all the bullshit, yes, this will be an uncensored vlog, pull away all the BS, and basically say, look, when you get down to it, what are the facts of a given situation about Star Wars, and what can we make of it, what can we discuss about it, sort of trying to give us this playing field where we're all on even ground because we're actually using real facts instead of just making shit up as we go along. That said, uh, I was asked repeatedly over the last year or so if I would consider doing a Star Wars vlog. I've been doing the live stream podcast stuff with Battlefront, been doing from the Star Wars home video library, been doing the podcast. So to an extent, I didn't think it was really necessary to get thoughts out on these other topics because there were plenty of venues that I was involved in. But after we all made the decision that Rebels Roundtable will be ending after Season 2 of Rebels, and after really having a chance to talk to some of the viewers of the live streams about other topics to cover, it struck me that this would be a good place to be able to talk about topics that viewers ask about, that visitors to the social media pages for the Star Wars Timeline Gold and such might ask about, and topics that just don't necessarily fit within the purview of the podcasts that I'm involved with or a given live stream. So... Here we are, the voice of reason or lack thereof, predominantly a Star Wars based vlog, though if there are topics that are off topic for that, I will note it so that it's easy to figure that out by first turning on the video and seeing the little title screen there. So, this time I want to talk about uh, the whole Continue Legends thing, the whole reboot of Legends as Legends and a new canon alongside it and such, the consternation over that. And the big question, which is actually one that is also addressed in a recent episode of Star Wars Beyond the Films, which either you have heard recently or will be coming out very soon as of when I'm recording this. Basically the question of, did a reboot need to happen? Was a reboot inevitable, in a sense, of Star Wars? And in the context of that, was it the best decision they could have made, the worst decision they could have made, or something in between? So let's go back. Let's cycle it backwards in time to think about Star Wars and the idea of canon. Now, I've done an extensive episode on this from, I believe it was from, from the Star Wars library before I ended that series or put it on indefinite hiatus. So I don't want to go heavily, heavily in depth with this. But basically, when the Star Wars saga first launched with the novelization of A New Hope back in 1976, then the film in 77, and things like the newspaper strips, the first Del Rey novels, uh, Marvel's Pizzazz, the regular Marvel series and all that, there was no intention of making one unified continuity for Star Wars. The Del Rey books did their own thing, the films did their own thing, the Marvel Comics did their own thing, and so on, and all the, the newspaper strips did their own thing, and all those different sources tried to base things on the films and be faithful to them, and yet you wouldn't necessarily see the newspaper strips and the Marvel Comics and the Del Rey novels trying to interlink together. It just wasn't the way things were done. Move forward, those publishing lines end, we get the RPG from West End Games, the Star Wars role-playing game that provides sort of a basis of specific sort of reference work type material about the Star Wars universe, and then you hit 1991, and Star Wars does something that is somewhat unique for its time within sci-fi publishing. It's going to be putting out all these licensed works, comics, novels, video games, and so on, that are all going to be interlinked together in one giant continuity that is thought of as the official continuation of the Star Wars saga, at least as of 1991. It, it would not necessarily be approved by George Lucas, but Lucas was giving the thumbs up to Lucasfilm to allow his company to contract with licensees like Dark Horse Comics and Bantam Spectre and so on to put together this growing continuity. Bear in mind, this is the early 90s. 
At this point, Lucas is kind of waffling on the number of Star Wars films he ever said there were going to be. Back in the 70s and 80s, he had said that it was going to be one starting with A New Hope, with A New Hope being the only one because they didn't know it was going to be a success. Then it winds up being, oh, well, actually A New Hope is the beginning of a series of 12. Then it's, well, actually there's nine, a sequel trilogy, the original trilogy, I and mean, even before that, a prequel trilogy, and A New Hope is episode four, hence getting the subtitle. This is still a little bit before Lucas will turn around and say, actually, I only said there were going to be six films. There were never meant to be nine and all of that line of BS that he tries to feed people later. This is still in that era where it's either nine, heading towards maybe six. Either way, Lucas isn't making new Star Wars films at this point. It's the early 1990s, and we assume that this new continuity being developed will be the Star Wars. Even if it doesn't really have Lucas's blessing per se, it's got Lucas films, and that's good enough for us. There was always sort of that unwritten but obvious understanding that what Lucas does and what the films do trumps what's in the books, novels, comics, whatever. But the books, novels, and comics are meant to be one whole. Then comes 1997. We get the special editions of the Star Wars films and a new rule to keep in mind, which is the idea, well, that Lucas is going to keep tinkering with the films and each new edition that comes out will supersede the other ones. Yes, all of a sudden, Han didn't shoot first. Yes, all of a sudden, there is that redundant Jabba the Hutt scene in A New Hope, basically repeating much of the same dialogue as the Greedo scene, and so on, and so on, and so on. Yes, we do get to see more of the Wampa Ice Beast so it's not nearly as cool anymore, and yes, the Sarlacc, the fanged vagina of doom, as some used to say, now has a beak that has a phallic aspect to it that really makes it creepy when you start thinking of it in a Freudian sense. You get to 1999, and in come the prequels, starting with The Phantom Menace, carried over into Attack of the Clones in 2002, and in 2005, Revenge of the Sith, and Lucas says he is done making Star Wars films. He still starts tinkering with Star Wars, though, again in 2008, with his work on The Clone Wars with Dave Filoni and company, as they create a new cartoon series and create a new level of canon. Because you see, Lucasfilm had started to look at canon not in terms of books as a whole, but as individual elements, and a database was created, the Star Wars Holocron Continuity Database maintained by Leland Chi, and in that database, there were labels of just how real or canonical something actually was. We had G-Canon, which was anything coming directly from George Lucas, like, say, the original films. We had T-Canon, a new level created in 2008 specifically for the Clone Wars television series, then we had C canon, or continuity canon, specifically dealing with all that official continuity stuff out there that was never really Lucas's level, but meant to fit together in what we thought of as real Star Wars for many, many years, the books, the novels, the comics, the video games, and so forth. Uh, then, of course, we had S-level canon, secondary stuff that was kind of questionable, and in canon, the non-continuity stuff, stuff that wasn't meant to fit within any other continuity, usually in terms of parodies or what-if stories. Call it apocryphal, call it infinities, whatever it was eventually labeled as in canon. So we had a continuity built on top of a foundation from Lucas that was sort of inviolable and had the ability to smash through anything else. Uh, probably most notably, when we had the prequels come in, they had some retcons as to things like, oh, well... Anakin slash Vader's age and Obi-Wan's age, they weren't what we thought they were. They are slightly different. In the case of Anakin, actually quite a bit different. Or, oh, Jedi aren't allowed to marry? What the heck? Time to retcon ki Mundi, a relatively recent creation just three years earlier. And with the Clone Wars, we'd seen an entire era shattered. Because the Clone Wars era had been off limits until 2002. Then the licensees were allowed to start producing stories and produce this great intricate storyline of books, novels, I keep saying books and novels as if they're different things. Uh, books, comics, video games, and so forth that were actually mapped out in terms of months and in some cases weeks in a particular order so you could see this big interweaving huge galactic struggle of the Clone Wars. Lucas comes in with the Clone Wars cartoon series, shatters the living hell out of that with all kinds of contradictory things, like a different version of Quinlan Voss. All of a sudden, Anakin is knighted much earlier. Anakin has a Padawan no one's ever heard of. Uh, eventually, a new fate for Asajj Ventures, and so on and so on. And we're promised that, don't worry, it'll all make sense. It'll all be meant to fit together, even though there'll be quite a bit of retcons going on once Clone Wars as a series ends. Unfortunately, when it does end, Disney has purchased Star Wars at that point. They're moving on from the Clone Wars, and no solution is ever forthcoming. So that era is still a massive Star Wars continuity clusterfuck. But all of that was pre-Disney. All of that was basically, hey, 
We're building this continuity starting in 1991. We will eventually scoop in all that earlier stuff and try to make it work as well. And it's all meant to fit as one giant version of Star Wars, but we know that Lucas can come in and tinker with it or smash through it at any given time. But when he does, we'll just sit back, take a deep breath, and find a way to make it all work. We will try to retcon it and shoehorn things in that really don't fit very well together. Like, say, Korriban is Moriban! Because Lucas felt like changing the name to something that sounds similar just so it was his. That sort of thing. But for years, that was our Star Wars. If we were fans of the expanded universe, or the official continuity as you called it at the time, that was a big deal. To have Star Wars have this sprawling saga of many thousands of years, and many, many adventures in the lives of heroes, both from the films and outside of the films, like those in Legacy, or the members of Rogue Squadron, and so on. That was a big deal. Then comes the announcement that Lucasfilm has been purchased by Disney, and that Disney is going to make new Star Wars films starting with Episode 7. To which, of course, Lucas comes in and revises his statement yet again, saying, Well, I always said that I wasn't going to make another Star Wars film. I didn't say somebody else could, and I just met me. Whatever, George. Whatever. The moment that it was announced that Episode 7 would be entering production, we realized that something was going to have to happen if it was going to fit with the official continuity. Something would have to happen probably to the continuity instead of for that continuity. And a lot of questions swirled until they finally announced that yes, they were rebooting canon essentially. They were going to say that the official continuity is now Legends and it's this sprawling saga that is still a whole that we could sort of draw inspiration from. But that canon, Lucas's level, is now being evened so basically there's the films and there was the Clone Wars as G-Canon and T-Canon. Now they're essentially one, an even level, and that all new novels, comics, TV shows, and movies will all be equal as a new level of canon as they build essentially a new saga or a new alternate timeline beyond what had existed from 1991 up through about the middle of 2014, although it is still growing a little bit with uh, the Old Republic at this point. It was a reboot, and people freaked! And people are still freaking out. And a lot of people have walked away from Star Wars because of it. There are plenty of people who despise The Force Awakens, not because of what it is as a film, but despise it because it was the impetus for changing our beloved saga from one incarnation to another. Now, me, I kind of like them both. I think that there's much more epic storytelling in the Legends continuity, but I do like some of the more personal storytelling in stories like Lost Stars in canon. I'm able to enjoy both, because I'm used to the idea that in science fiction sagas, of course there's going to be alternate continuities. There's tons of different versions of Transformers. Multiple different versions of how Highlander plays out. Uh, now we've got a reboot of Star Trek, albeit sort of within the logic of Star Trek. Um, yeah, sci-fi is going to have alternate timelines. We deal with it. Star Wars already had some itself. Parodies? What if stories like Infinities? Why are we freaking out? Well, because that massive thing we thought of as true Star Wars, so to speak, quotes around true, was no longer true anymore. But was it inevitable? Was a reboot always in the cards for Star Wars if there was going to be another film? I would argue, yes. Yes, it was. Because they didn't really have a whole lot of options. Let's break it down. I would argue that when Lucas eventually let go of the reins of Star Wars, either because he died or because he sold it off, someone was going to take over the saga. It wasn't going to just die with him or die with his retirement. Star Wars as a cultural phenomenon and a money-making franchise would go onward. And logically, since the franchise is based in films and makes a ridiculous ton of money when it's showing in theaters, it only makes sense that whoever took it over, whether it's Disney, someone else heading Lucasfilm, whatever, whoever it was would come in and want to start making new Star Wars films. That seems to me pretty much inevitable. So now, 20 years from now, when Lucas retires, when Lucas sells it off, when Lucas dies, it was probably going to happen. New movies, that is. So the question becomes, well, if there's going to be new movies, then how do you approach it? Well, you can either make it consistent with the existing EU at the time, the Legends continuity now, or you don't make it consistent. One or the other. On the consistent side, how do you do that? Well, I mean, you could do option one. Just do an adaptation. Do a film version of the Thrawn trilogy. Do a film version of the New Jedi Order. Do a film version of the Han Solo trilogy. 
just take an existing story and adapt it and tell it that way. Heck, they did it back with the Slaves of the Republic arc from the comic book of the Clone Wars that then became episodes of the Clone Wars. We've seen them adapt things before. But was that likely? Were they really going to put all kinds of money into a new Star Wars film, hype it up as any new Star Wars film would be, and be telling a story that's already been told? Telling a story where spoilers are, of course, already out there because it already exists. This isn't Game of Thrones. This isn't Harry Potter. Star Wars hype would need some surprises to it, some spoilers to beware of. Would they really have done an adaptation? I would argue no. Maybe, and this would be kind of cool to see, maybe they do adaptations in sort of the vein of what Disney's doing with some of the Marvel stuff and what DC Comics is doing, doing animated versions direct to home video or something. But a theatrical film based on an existing Star Wars book? Probably not. Especially given the fact that any material released as a Star Wars film tied into the official continuity runs the risk of having to have a hell of a lot of explaining to do, a lot of backstory necessary to truly understand what we're seeing, otherwise it gets watered down. You know, you try telling a movie version of the New Jedi Order without explaining things prior to that. Try telling a film version of the Jedi Academy trilogy without explaining some of the stuff before that. There's that issue of you don't want audiences to have to do homework to be able to understand your film. Now, granted, one of the big criticisms of The Force Awakens is that there are certain aspects of the film, like the relationship of the Resistance to the New Republic and the origin of the First Order and such, that is only found in things like the visual dictionary for the film or the novelizations. I totally agree. It probably needed some more background in it. But from the standpoint of making the decision of how to make a film in the first place, requiring your audience to do homework generally is a bad idea. So doing an adaptation, probably unlikely. Okay, fine. So they tell a story and they tell a story that is set within the confines of of the continuity as we know it, using characters that we know and love. But then you're back to the whole homework thing again, right? Depending on where you tell that story, there's going to be a lot of backstory that people are going to need to fully understand and appreciate what you're doing. Plus, if it's not an adaptation, it's an original story, and you want it to have any impact, you got to be careful where you put it. Where are you going to stick it within, say, the lifetime of the original trilogy characters without having it stomp on something else or run into conflict with something else? There's so many stories in for instance, the era of the original trilogy, I don't think the characters had time to stop and use the refresher or the bathroom, as they now say in canon. They don't call it a refresher anymore. It's bizarre to think that you could fit anything like that that's momentous within the boundaries of what already existed. Well, maybe you could stick it, say, after Crucible, before Legacy. That would make sense. Okay, but you're still dealing with the whole background thing. Introduce Jaina Solo. Well, you know, Jaina Solo, right? She's one of the Solo kids. Wait, one of the Solo kids? We'll see there were three of them. Uh, but Jason Solo, he fell to the dark side uh, under the tutelage, basically, of a woman who actually used to be kind of Luke's girlfriend, which was an Imperial spy and everything, but she turned into be the Dark Lady of the Sith, and she was thought dead for a while, but she's back and everything. So she's back, but now she's dead, but she turned Jason to the dark side, and Jaina had to kill him. Oh, that other one, Anakin Solo? Yeah, Anakin Solo died in the Yuuzhan Vong War. Wait, the Yuuzhan Vong War? What the hell's a Yuuzhan Vong? Well, it's these alien extragalactic blah, blah, blah. How do you tell a story in that era without either being extreme fluff or requiring a ton of exposition or homework to make it make sense for a general audience? Again, it's breaking those rules of what Hollywood thinks of as a viable way of producing something. So, can't do that. Okay, fine. We tell a story and we just set it in such a far-flung time period or far-flung part of the galaxy that it doesn't matter. It's not going to clash with anything that exists because it's so far out of the way. No problem. Maybe it's sometime between Dawn of the Jedi and Tales of the Jedi. Maybe it's sometime between the Old Republic and when Darth Ruin creates the next round of Sith, although there's not a ton of time in between there. Maybe it's way after Legacy or something. Well, okay, but this changeover to Disney is happening during the lifetime still of Carrie Fisher, Harrison Ford, Mark Hamill. We've got actors from the original trilogy who are still alive. Of course they're going to want to have them have cameos or full-fledged appearances, like in the case of Han Solo, in the new films. Star Wars has been a generational tale. They're going to want to find some way to tie it together. So something far-flung and out of the way may have been a viable option, but really probably only a viable option or a more viable option if it was 20 years from now, 10 years from now, at some point after the actors from the original trilogy had passed away, so that any new stories being told, even after Return of the Jedi, 
would not include them as essential components of tying it all together. So making a film that fits with the continuity, pretty unlikely. Okay? Where they make something that's totally new, which is basically what they did. Well, again, I would see three options there. One is you do the old approach. You do the Lucas approach, like with the Clone Wars and to a lesser extent with the prequels. You do what my buddy in podcasting, my partner on Star Wars Beyond the Films, Mark Herleman, calls the Wrecking Ball, which basically is you just make whatever you want, a la George Lucas, and you slap it into the continuity and you let it bash anything out of the way that contradicts and leave it up to the continuity guys like Leland Chi to figure out how in the hell to piece it all back together again. So, okay. The Force Awakens say it's produced in a similar way to what it is now. Uh, ben Solo, Kylo Ren, uh, Han and Leia's marriage time, them being apart, Luke being away, etc., etc. Boom, it crashes into continuity. Chewbacca is alive. Well, Chewbacca's alive. All right, we're just going to have to retcon away the whole new Jedi Order saga. Okay, Luke hasn't been trained in Jedi, at least not all that long. Maybe we can retcon it to being his first class of students still around in the Jedi Academy trilogy, but all that other stuff, yeah. That stuff's going to have to go, too. And, oh, wait, Han and Leia getting married uh, earlier than they were and, and not having those kids. We're going to have to get rid of Courtship of Princess Leia and Thrawn Trilogy and all that stuff. So, yeah, just smash the shit out of the continuity as it existed in the exact same way the Clone Wars did to the Clone Wars era. How is that a good thing? You do a wrecking ball approach, you make it a convoluted mess where people don't know which books count, which don't, which comics count, which don't, and all these guidebooks are kind of right, but not really all that right anymore. You've just created a massive mess. Again, a CF, I won't say it again, a CF of continuity, much like what the Clone Wars is. I don't see how anyone who loved the Legends continuity, as I did, who loved that continuity, would have ever wanted that to be the option they took. To come in and just decimate an entire chunk of continuity every time they made a new film and then had everything pieced back together, hopefully at some point. Though we would have little faith of that because that didn't happen with the Clone Wars. At some point, you got to sit back and say, wow, I'm not really up for destruction right now. So what other options then would there be? Well, you got a partial reboot or a full reboot. Full reboot's what they went with. A partial reboot is what was argued for a while. When we thought that there wasn't going to be a full reboot, and there was a question of, well, how are they going to make a sequel trilogy if there's already stories after Return of the Jedi? There was a thought that they would just have to have some marker in time, whether it's Return of the Jedi or later, and just say, after that, the old stories don't exist. Prior to that, they do. And it's essentially a why. Right, where you've got one continuity and then it branches off with the new films and branches off the other direction with the stories that came before. Still alternate continuities, essentially, but only a partial reboot at a certain point. But where do you put that point? Right, Again, Chewbacca's alive. There's only one solo kid. Han and Leia got married within the year after Return of the Jedi and had Kylo Ren. At some point in there, there's a whole uprising with Kylo Ren and Luke stops training Jedi and sort of goes his own way and Han and Leia split up and go their own way and yeah, there's not an, an ongoing conflict with the Imperial Remnant because there's a peace treaty and sort of a cold war that starts after the Battle of Jakku just a year after Endor, etc, etc. Try to find a place in there to put a realistic reboot starting point and you pretty much have to make that point at Return of the Jedi for that to make sense. But it still leaves other questions unanswered. What do you do about books like Cross Current? Some story prior to, some story after. Does the whole thing go? Or is there just no resolution to the earlier part because the part set after Return of the Jedi no longer exists? What about a book like Rogue Planet? It was basically a prequel designed to set up the Yuuzhan Vong for the New Jedi Order. Well, there's no more New Jedi Order. Does Rogue Planet need to exist anymore? What about other references that only exist to connect back and forth? What about the fact that it seems as though Lucasfilm and Lucas were leaning on this idea that there's probably ever only been one Sith Order? So that means what? The Old Republic, Knight Errant, uh, Tales of the Jedi, all that stuff's gone. Maybe even Dawn of the Jedi. Who knows? Maybe we'll get another uh, origin story. And oh, look, here's a solo film starring Han Solo that's coming in. Oh, goodbye to these Han Solo books, and so on and so on. Even if there was a reboot just after Return of the Jedi, you still have questions of other materials prior to that, and every time there's a new film, you gotta be worrying what needs to be rebooted now. 
It gets rebooted piecemeal anyway, and again becomes very confusing, especially those who aren't really following it in depth, and even to some who are, and it becomes a continuity mess and a product line mess in terms of trying to sell things and make it clear what any of these books have to do with each other and the films. That leaves the last option, the nuclear option, the option that they took, which is a reboot. To say, you know what? The Legends continuity is what it is. And aside from that mess of the Clone Wars that we made, thank you, George, it really is kind of a mostly cohesive continuity, and we love it. We want to keep it intact. We want to keep it whole. But we have these new stories to tell that are going to contradict it. We know it's going to contradict it because we have no idea exactly where it's all going other than it's going to start with a sequel trilogy. So what do we do? Well, if we want to leave Legends whole, intact, we've got to basically just scoot it off to the side. Legends, you're going to be an alternate continuity. Still a continuity, still a viable form of Star Wars storytelling, as we see with the Old Republic still continuing. We're just going to label it Legends. It is what it always has been, but it's no longer considered the version of Star Wars. Though again, in Lucas's eyes and Lucasfilm's eyes, it was never the version of Star Wars. That was canon. That was Lucas's G&T canon stuff. This was just the building continuity off of that for many, many years. Again, they use the term canon in so many different ways, so many interchangeable and often contradictory ways prior to giving us the GTC, etc., etc. format that using the term canon is almost meaningless for anything in the era. But if you do that, if you sit it off to the side, it remains intact and you can create something new. New films, new cartoons, series like Rebels, uh, new novels, new comics, and maybe, maybe people won't like it. Maybe people won't like this new continuity, maybe they'll still prefer Legends. But they give a shot to creating something new that winds up being just as much of a new continuity for Star Wars as, you know, DC Comics' relaunch of Masters of the Universe was for He-Man. Or the He-Man movie was for He-Man, if you want to take a more negative view. Though I actually like the He-Man movie. I'm, I'm probably alone in that. So, you got multiple options. But of the six main options, I feel as though really the only thing that they could do that would leave Legends intact, the thing that would do the least amount of damage, was the full reboot that they did. Again, were they going to make adaptations? Very unlikely. Were they going to make something that somehow fit? Probably not. Not without having to have a whole lot of homework being done. Could they have done something in a far-flung era or place with no connection to anything else? They could have, but that was also extremely, extremely unlikely. If they were going to do something new, they could have done the Wrecking Ball approach, which would not have been a good option. It would have pissed off a lot of people. They could have done a partial reboot, but they would have had to keep doing reboots in smaller bits as they made more movies set before the sequel trilogy, or at least before Return of the Jedi, or an actual reboot. I think of all the decisions that they had that they could have made, they made the right one. It sucks for those of us who have devoted many years to the Legends continuity. I do the Star Wars timeline gold. Since 1997, I've been chronicling about 2,000 pages or so just of the Legends continuity in my Star Wars timeline gold document. Of course I was pissed off when I heard the announcement. But at least it's still whole. At least it is still a timeline, if not the timeline for Star Wars. I can handle there being another. I'm just glad the one that I love didn't get trashed any more than the Clone Wars already kind of did to at least three years of it. Was it inevitable to see a reboot? Possibly. I think it was inevitable we'd see more Star Wars films someday unless the franchise just burned itself out. And given the options for producing Star Wars films, I would say that a reboot was still the best option they could have taken. That said, who's to say that the people making the decisions are going to take the best option. So I'm not sure a reboot was inevitable, though it to an extent was, but new films certainly were. Unless Lucas just killed the franchise with either his death and something in the will, or choosing not to sell off the company and just bring it all to a grinding halt to say, screw it, I'm done, so so are all you fans too. And that would have been even more disheartening. So, 
That's my opinion, the voice of reason, or lack thereof. Feel free to agree or disagree. I'm sure there'll be some pissed off people from this topic, but I want to engender some discussion here. Just please try to be civil to one another. Make your comments down in the comments. I'll respond to some. And if you have new questions that you want to see answered on a future episode of this vlog, feel free to post questions there, or you can email those questions to Nathan at StarWarsFanWorks.com, and I'll use future ones here on the show. Up next, the question of... It's the first Star Wars movie since 1983, and Star Wars is back! And the divide that creates, and has created, between prequel fans and original trilogy fans, and how we can try to start seeing each other's perspective. Thank you for watching. May the Force be with you.